Hello folks, Fuzzy here, long time no see. Went ahead and picked up Pillars of Eternity as soon as it released today. I I completely missed this game until just a few days ago. I saw somebody else playing a, uh, well, okay, I only watched the first two episodes of his playthrough because I didn't want to spoil it for myself, but I had to have this game. It it just captures from what I've seen it just captures that feeling the look the style of uh, like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Fallout that that style of CRPG that's nostalgic as hell for me I just had to have this so figured I'd go ahead and play through uh, I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and do on normal because I am not a glutton for punishment too bad uh, <laughs> Jesus, Path of the Damned. <laughs> Alright. Can't even change the setting once you've chosen. Um, okay, that just disables tooltips and... Oh, permadeath. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and play on normal. Oh, I'm so stoked for this. Yay. Now, I'm probably just going to do character creation as the first episode because, well... Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. All right. Yeah, here we go. I am going to be male because, well, can't have a beard as a chick. I mean, wait, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, see? They don't. Even the freaking dwarven females can't beard it up. Well, whatever. But let's go ahead and just look through everybody. You got your plain Jane humans here. Uh. Oh. That's. That's kind of cool. I. Ugh. Of course, I don't know any of the lore for, well, I don't think anybody does outside of the creators at this point, since this is an original story, but uh, if you're into reading up on all the cultures and backstory of these guys, well, looks like this game will facilitate that for you. Um, so, guys that like to live near the coast, standard dwarves. Goddamn elves. So you could probably make Dobby as one of these guys. And some guy with the Rorschach mask horn thing. Uh, dexterity and intellect. Um, might. Minus one dexterity, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a fighter this time around. Okay, so let's see here. What's the difference in these guys? Mountain dwarves have a bonus to defend against poison and disease attacks. 
and plus 15 accuracy against any creature of the wild or nah I'll take defense against poison well and disease okay so now we get to choose our class here which okay right away I kinda like dual wielding uh, Looks pretty standard fair though. I mean, barbarian, fighter, paladin, ranger. But what's a cipher? Eastern Reach ciphers were once called Brishog when mind hunters. Soul focused effects. So some sort of spell sword. I'm guessing. Uh, let's see, of course, standard fighter. Hmm. I was debating on either a fighter or a ranger for my first playthrough, just... Well, that's kind of my standard playstyle whenever I do D&D. &D. Uh, I'm not a magic guy. I like dwarves. And priests, that's, that's really not my thing either. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and go with fighter. Let's see, fighter abilities. Okay, I get knocked down. Or with the them prone but causing okay or discipline to run. Okay, so plus ten accuracy for fifteen seconds that I can use once per encounter. Not per day, per encounter. That's and twice per encounter I could knock somebody on their ass. Um oh, look at that. Prone for five seconds versus four. I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take knockdown. All right. If I understand this correctly, if I really wanted to, I can make this guy dumb as a. Wow, I, re I really can. Okay, but I. Min maxing just really isn't my thing, per se. I just. Uh, I gotta do a little reading and, and see what all these st stats have to do with anything, so. Uh, useful. Kind of what I thought. There go there. Perception. That's that's a fair roll. I don't want to make him too stupid just for the sake of well, conversations. That this game doesn't have charisma or anything, so I'm I'm assuming that intelligence is going to have a pretty good weight towards that. So let's see. 
Okay, so wherever you're from grants you a different... I'm not, well, not only different starting gear, but... I don't know about using dual spears, man. That just... Okay, Aider Empire is currently largest. Um, an equatorial superpower? Hmm. Large crack southern expanse of polar ice. But the the dual spears. What the hell? Uh I guess I'm going to go ahead and go with the Living Lands just for the might. My first instinct would be to go for the white that wins this cracked southern expanse of polar ice. I I, I like frozen areas for some reason. I, I don't fucking know. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go with this just for the might plus... The dual spears, man, that just looks freaking retarded. Uh, I spear and shield, fine. I'm gonna switch that up later anyway, but okay, you were part of a. Okay. Survival allows characters to make better use of the food and potion items they find. Um, okay, so whatever job you come from. I could be a scientist? Uh, scientist that cracks skulls, okay. Uh, let's see. Hunter, mercenary. Labor, merchants, more mechanics. Yeah. Honestly, I don't want stealth, because... Duh. Survivor. Honestly, I, I, I would kind of want survival in athletics, but I don't see that as an option. So... Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and take mercenary. Oh. Yeah, this is straight out of Baldur's Gate, except you can actually see details of what your shirt is. So. Secondary. I didn't do anything. pretty blasphemous. Let's go through, find us a proper beard, shall we? One that I like. Oh, damn. 
I'm leaning towards that, honestly. Uh, we'll go with that. Alright. <laughs> okay. The MacGyver. That might work. Actually, I'm not that angry at that mohawk. But... Shaggy and unkempt. Yeah, that's honestly the closest to my real hairstyle, so. Uh, and just like Baldur's Gate, you're going to have a ton of portraits that don't look anything like your, your character. I mean, I'm sure I could probably do a custom portrait, but uh, that takes effort. I'm into the females. Okay. Well, we're kind of limited then on... Oh, there we go. That's... That's good enough. So... Well? Follow me. <coughs> Quickly and quietly. Yeah. Follow me. Nice and slow. Alright. Veteran. Okay, so there we go. We got our dwarf, which, yeah, that spear is going to be one of the first things to go if this is my starting gear. I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out right now. Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. <laughs> There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Okay. Sparfield nods and slides the warm bowl over his shoulders. Uh, where would I find these berries? Is it dangerous out there? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. They don't got Audra where you come from? 
Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> Off with you. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. I kind of wish I could click on that Beowick and know what that is, but... You heard the man. Let's get going huh. before you keel over. Sure, we'll find out. Sure. Okay. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts <laughs> for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite got used to shaving on the road. I say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Well, let's see what you've got. Uh, um, before I get in here and really look at stuff, I guess it wouldn't hurt. Yeah, see, I don't like spears. And padded armor, thats that's got to go too. But I only have 100 gold, so at this Something point, else you need? Yeah, see, that'd be... I can't replace... Tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. Giant miniature space piglet. I got that for pre-ordering, you know, two hours and before the game was released, but hey, my payday was today. Sue me. But, uh, of course, that's reference to Boo. Khan's Pledge. Sidem grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils that plague the world of Eora, an aspect of the god Elthus. Gone represents the harvest of old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gone helps protect the dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before their time. So, pretty awesome ring, I guess, that came with uh, pre-ordering as well, but it looks like there's no point to me talking to this guy. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing I could buy here, and um, I really only wanted to get through character creation at this point. <clears throat> so, excuse me, but 
I'm going to go ahead and call the episode here. Uh, I might play a little bit ahead. and well, Hey, see you guys in the next video. Bye.